with everything that's going on in our country and around the world, it sure looks like Jesus is coming soon. All the things that we see, all the anti-Israel in our own country, that shocked me. You know, some of them out there protesting for Hezbollah, which, make no doubt about it, it is a terrorist organization that thinks nothing of killing and maiming. It doesn't even mind maiming and killing its own people. They shamelessly use hospitals and schools as shields knowing that the world will turn against anyone that was to hit such location. <laughs> and the only way for Israel to win is to totally drive them out of Palestine. The problem is there's so many that have been conditioned from birth that I don't know that they'll ever get anti-Semitism out. And then we look at them here, these college students. I don't know why a parent would spend so much money to make the children students. Amen. But when you see LG, LG, anyway, yeah, out there, and they have on their signs LGBTQ for how for Hamas, and you have to think that's kind of like seeing a sign chickens for Colonel Sanders. Because they think we're happy. Their Quran tells a Muslim, take them up to the highest building and chunk them off. And if they survive that, to stone them. So I don't understand where most of their mind is. I did see on a couple of campuses a little bit of heart-lifting news where the other students came out and drowned them out chanting USA. Singing the Star Spangled Banner. That's what we need. But even more than that, we need to recognize Israel's place in history and Israel's place in the future. We talk of a millennial kingdom after the tribulation. The reason is to continue to fulfill all the promises that God made to Israel. Now many will come and tell you, well, Israel disqualified itself and now the church took all the promises for Israel. That is not true. Paul said that even while Israel was our enemy for the gospel's sake, that we had to remember that we are branches grafted on to a tree whose root is Judaism. So while God has broke some branches off, He has never turned His eye away from Israel. He has brought punishment because those He loves, He chastens. 
That's true of Israel as well as the church and the individual. So what happened? As we look through early history, we normally just focus on the sin of Adam and Eve. But there are three major sins that take place in the first 12 chapters of Genesis. We know number one, Satan came into the garden. He tempted Adam and Eve. Eve was beguiled. Eight. We don't know what Adam was thinking. But he ate also. Immediately they died spiritually because they were separated from God. God had to drive them out of this beautiful garden that He had put them in. And from that point on, He said, you will earn your bread by the sweat of your back. Mm -hmm. We focus a lot on that. Because God told us for all of sin to come short of the glory of God. Yeah. Yeah. Chapter 6, we see a somewhat confusing situation where it says the sons of God saw the daughters of men and came and married all that they chose. Now there's many interpretations trying to get around the actual wording. Everywhere in the Bible where sons of God are used, it's Elohim. Which is lesser God. Which is angels. And they came. And they preferred it. And they messed up the gen genetic gene pool. It got so bad that God said that you know the heart of man is wicked and every thought of his mind is evil continually. Sin was so rampant that God came and He told Noah, build this big boat. He told him exactly how to build it. He said, I'm going to flood the world. Now think of the faith that it took because up till that point it had never rained on her. Water came up from the ground and watered all the vegetation. So can you imagine being Noah building this big old boat on dry land away from any seas? And telling people you better get right, it's gonna rain. What's well, rain? You don't find out. I like the little joke that shows Noah telling people, and it says fact check uh, fact checkers have determined this to be false. Then they drown. God would play. God brought a flood upon the world and it didn't cover the whole world. You know how I know? Because it said every mountain was covered to at least 20 foot above. And I don't know about you, I used to be a pretty good swimmer, but I don't think I could swim for 40 days and 40 nights in a wild and boisterous sea. And then he could do anything else that breathed there. The ark came to rest on the ground, knowing his children got out, they restarted humanity. 
So you think that God would have gotten everybody's attention with flood. People saying, you know, we need to live for God. We need to do right. People were all of one language. They found a plane. Once again, they were disobedient. They started building Babel. God had told them to spread out and subdue the world. God's perfect plan ever from since Adam and Eve is that mankind would go out and make the earth like the Garden of Eden. That all people would be focused on God and worship of Him. Well, in the Bible, under the leadership of Nimrod, they decided that they knew better than God and they were going to build towers to reach into the heavens where they would worship their false gods and not have to depend on God. And they could just do what they wanted. It's much easier to follow a God that you make up because you can make up the rules as you go. God looked down. I said, no, this isn't going to happen. They were also under angelic watch care at that time. Mm -hmm. But instead of promoting God, the angels were promoting worship of self. Mm -hmm. So God came down and He confused the languages. Mm -hmm. And you would have think that He would have punished the angels, but each country, each language... He sent off to their geographical land and left them under the same watch care that they had wanted when they were in battle. God divorced Himself from the nations. Now the job of the angels, the watchers, was to bring the people back to God. That didn't happen. Why do we have so many false religions and false gods? Idol worship. And we know an idol is nothing. But there is a demonic presence behind. So God decided that since nations had turned against Him, He would create His own nation. That's where we come in on Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. Says now the Lord said to Abram, Get out of your country, from your family, and your father's house, to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. And I will bless those who bless you. And I will curse him who curses you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. God's plan was to raise up his own nation, Israel. And Israel was to be the light on a hill. A shining beacon, beacon to the rest of the world to draw them to God.
Now we know today that Israel failed miserably. As God said, there are stiff necked people. Amen. But you know, every time I go to point a finger at Israel, I got three fingers and a thumb pointing back at me. The church hadn't done a whole lot better. But we have to ask ourselves, are these promises that God made to Abram, are they still in effect? What was the basis? Where do we see the answer? And I am so glad y'all asked. Because if you turn to chapter 15 and start down in verse 17, God had told Abraham how to make a covenant with him. Now when two nations made a covenant, They offered the animal sacrifices and the two kings of the nations would walk between the sacrifices signifying that the covenant depended on both nations. Verse 17 says, And it came to pass when the sun went down and it was dark, the pot that behold there appeared a smoking oven and a burning torch that passed between those pieces. On the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham, saying to your descendants, I have given this land from the river of Egypt to the great river, the river Euphrates. And it goes through and lists the nations that God was dispossessing from the land. Now what I really want us to notice here, Abraham had done what God said. He made the sacrifices, he had cut the animals in two, he had laid them out, half on each side. The gist was if either one broke it, that what was done to the animals would be done to them. But when it came dark, Abraham fell into a slumber. And he saw a smoking oven and a symbolizing the Lord God. And God walked through the sacrifices by Himself. Amen. Brother Rick, what in the world does that have to do with anything? A great deal, actually. You see, the promises made to Abraham, what we call the Abrahamic covenant, is dependent solely on God. The Bible says God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Has God changed his mind about Israel? Everything God promised Israel through Abraham is dependent solely on God. It's 
Zechariah, in Zechariah,
your enemy. One says, kill your enemy. Oh, but Islam is a peaceful religion. What you're talking about is, yeah, that people is a peaceful religion once they kill all the infidels. Guess what? Christians are the infidels. And their motto is convert or die. Verse 3 of chapter 12 says, I will bless those you and I will curse him who curses you. In other words, God will bless those who bless Israel. And God will curse those who curse Israel. That hadn't changed. Reading the Bible, we know that all of this is going to get worse. It's like I'm living out the Bible every day. You see a great reach for global economy. You see our currency, they want to take the dollar away and go totally digital. Why would they want to go digital? Because they can control you go to the store and you want to buy ding-dongs? Guess what? They have the ability to say, no, Rick, you're too fat. You don't need ding-dongs. Or you speak out against the government. You're going to speak out against us? Fine. We'll just take everything you have. With click a button, all your savings, all your hard work, everything's gone. You don't get our little chip in your hand or forehead. We're going to cut off your head. Everything we see is heading in that direction. All the sneaky little things the government wants is for more power. So they can control. One of my favorite sayings I got from Facebook is why would the government strive so hard to take your guns if they weren't planning on doing something that you would need them for? They tried to take the guns right before the American Revolution. What did the people do? They shot them and ran them out of the country. Am I uh, suggesting violence? No. I'm suggesting that Christians rise up and take our country back. You see, with proper patriotism and voting the Bible, we could take this country back by the end. But there's one last promise that Abraham was promised and that would be Guilty if I didn't bring it up. God tells Abraham, and you shall all families of the earth be blessed. How are we all blessed by Abraham? You see, God starts in Genesis when He promises the woman that 
still have a son. That Satan will strike at his evil. But he will crush Satan's hand. Promises that to Eve. Tells Abraham that through his seed all nations will be blessed. And as we go through, we see God further and further refine His promises until we get to the Lord Jesus Christ. The God man. The one who loves us so much that there will be God of very God left heaven came to earth lived among his creation the God who it says in Colossians created all things that are created With the wave of a hand, he could have done away with all mankind and started over. But that wasn't what God had promised. And God is faithful to His promises. There was a problem. There was a problem in Israel, and there's a problem in the church, and there's a problem in your life and my life. We're sinners. And even though we are saved, guess what? We are in a body and world of sin. Jesus came to remove the second death. Remove spiritual death. To bring us back to reconciliation with Him. But how could we trust our Lord and Savior today if we didn't see how He kept His promises in the past? But we can look back. We can see the promises of God. And even though it was made so many centuries ago, we can look and say, God kept and keeps His promises. Amen. And if God kept and keeps His promises, Throughout the past. Sure. Guess what? We can absolutely guarantee God will keep His promises of the future. Sure. And, Amen. And in the present. Remember, God so loved the world that He sent His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish. Have that last right. You don't see John 3 18 much. Because it tells us that those who don't believe are condemned. God's heart and God's desire is that none should perish. Yeah. Sure. Many people say, well, if God's all powerful, why don't He just wave His hand and make that Because He said you must believe in your heart. That's right. Yeah. And what you believe in your heart comes out your mouth. Amen. Amen. That's right. That's right. Any man that tells me I'm a Christian, but I don't let it affect my work. 
I can't say he's not a Christian. But I can say he's mm -hmm. a useless, ineffectual Christian. Amen. Because we always go where our heart leads us. Mm -hmm. That's right. Now Jesus said, be careful. Follow your heart because it is wicked and deceitful. We must make sure our heart is totally focused on our Lord and that's Savior, right. Jesus Christ. That's right. That's right. Amen. His Word is a blessing. And I don't like all His rules. Every rule in the Bible is given so that we might have a good life. Yeah. That we might prosper. Does that mean we're all going to become wealthy? No. No. Does that mean we're all not going to have trouble? No. no. But God promises mm. that those who love Him, when we come to Him in prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, That's right. that He will give us something. Brother Jim, if you would come, we'll have a prayer and for a hymn of benefit. It'll be easy, easy for me to say, hymn of invitation. Yeah. Brother Rick, I wanted to tell you, you know, this morning in Sunday school, we talked about that light that shone down on. Oh, Brother Paul, <laughs> that old light right there was killing me. I know <laughs> the light was shining down on him, blinking. <laughs> I was like, "Boy, I tell you right now, Sunday school's coming right in here in the worship center." <laughs> Amen. <laughs> All right. You know what? Okay. If it was me with Brother Paul, yeah, he'd probably seen and heard mm -hmm. the sizzle, mm -hmm. a little smoke, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. right? That's why I'm so God, glad God didn't like me. Amen. All right, everybody rise and we'll turn in our hymnals to 305. 305. I have decided to follow Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right. 305. I have decided to follow Jesus. On the count of three, one, two, and three. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Can we can we sing through that song? Yeah. Y'all mind? I want to sing through that song. I don't mind. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. All right. Second verse. Go with me. I still will follow. Oh, my God. Go with me. I still will follow. Oh, my Go with me. I still will follow. No turning back. No turning back. My cross I'll carry till I see thee.
comes here and, and uh, is filled with you, Lord, and uh, brings your word. Lord, we ask that you just be behind him each and every day. Lord, we thank you for his wife that stands next to him, Lord, and, and keeps him empowered. And, uh, and Lord, we ask that you Amen. just uh, be with her and bless her each and every day as well, Lord. Lord, we ask that you just uh, reach down and touch this congregation, Amen. Lord, and allow us to be filled with your Holy Spirit, Lord, more often than none, Lord. And we ask that you would just uh, allow us to go out amongst the edges and, and preach your word to those that don't know you, Lord, and even those Amen. that are having problems following you. Lord, we ask that you just allow us to encourage those, uh, give them uh, the uh, utmost, uh, uh, I guess, endurance to go out there and do that. Lord, we ask that you just be with us, be with all those that we put on our prayer list, Lord, be with all those that are sick, all those that are uh, traveling, Lord, we ask you to be with them, and we ask you to be with us as we uh, go our separate ways today and bring us back here so we can hear your word again next Sunday. And it's your precious holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.